Good morning, everyone. This morning is Thursday, March the 19th, 2020. Uh, this message is for our local church congregation in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Life Tabernacle. To our leaders, to our congregation, to all of the members of our church and people that are future members, I want to give us a message this morning uh, to, to help lead us and guide us in these times of panic and disunity from what I believe the word of the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord has spoken to me yesterday. From the book of Daniel chapter three and verse number 27, uh, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together, together is a key term for today, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was any hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. So after Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been delivered from the fiery furnace, the entire uh, reasoning behind them going through that fiery furnace is found in verse 29. King Nebuchadnezzar made a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. So the purpose behind their persecution was mass conversion. And those of you that know our ministry know about mass conversion. And when all is said and done, there's going to be a mass conversion that comes out of these times of pandemonium. What I want to do is uh, settle the minds of all of our people, our parents, our children, children that are home from school right now, parents who have lost their jobs in the past week, waiters and waitresses who have no income, restaurant owners whose restaurants doors are closed, people who work in dentist offices who have no jobs right now. Let me set your mind at ease. Number one, uh, the church is going to continue to congregate and assemble. Number two, we will not be in defiance of any codes, of any government mandates. Uh, we have the support of our federal, local, and statewide governments. Uh, we will have the support of our law enforcement. I've met with these individuals who are the leaders of our state, of our city parish, uh, of our nation. I've spoken with them via phone. I've sat with them in my office. We've prayed together. We're in compliance with what they're asking of us to do, which is to control the spread of this virus, to flatten the curve of the spread of this virus. And we're going to do just that. I wanna thank our church for standing in solidarity with us in these times of persecution, in these times of panic, in these times of fear. So I wanna settle the dust right now in our community. If you come out to our service and we invite you, and when you do come, we invite you. Nobody's forced to come to any gathering. Secondly, if you do not come, we understand uh, we understand if you do not come out of uh, the fear of this virus spreading. However, when you do come, there will be no persecution for you coming onto our premise. As in accordance, there's 50 states, half of them say continue with life as usual. Half of them say cocoon, seclude, recluse, have no human contact. Nobody has the right answers right now. 
but Jesus is the answer. So I just want to calm you and let you know that you are not in defiance to any order of our government when you come out to us and we set in place the guidelines that we say are necessary to not spread this virus. That was number one. The second thing, church will continue this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, we will be running our buses this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Um, we're not gonna have more than 50 people per bus. <clears throat> Don't be scared of that cough. We have 26 buses that are going to run. <clears throat> if 10 people are on each bus, that's 260. Uh, if 20 people are on each bus, those are within government guidelines. <clears throat> so, uh, 30, 40, no more than 50 people on a bus. We're going to spread out. We're going to disinfect our buses. We're going to take all the precau uh, precautionary measures so as not to spread this disease. I don't want, I don't want our local officials to think that we're some revolutionaries and we're rebelling against you. That is not our purpose. The church is the last stronghold of peace and godliness and holiness and the last voice in the minds of people that are living in fear right now. People who need ministering to, people that need preaching to. Uh, so I just wanted to send out this message to you and encourage you that let's keep praying for one another. Let's keep lifting up one another. Let's keep encouraging one another. Feed somebody today. Reach out and minister to somebody today. This Sunday is going to be a great time. I'm going to feed everybody that comes to my premises within the guidelines of the government, not spreading a virus. Uh, not only breakfast, but a lunch is going to be served. Um, I'm not going to tell you in this message how we're going to do that, but just know we're going to do that. Don't live in fear. Do not live in fear. Perfect love casteth out all fear. I'm praying for all government officials, law enforcement, our governor, our mayor. I'm praying for you. We're covering you in prayer. We have anointed handkerchiefs that we're sending with everybody that comes to this uh, place of worship to tell you that uh, God's gonna keep you safe. American elitism, we're going to rebound like a slingshot. Our markets are gonna recover. Our restaurants are going to recover. Everybody that is, uh, that is unemployed right now is going to recover. That is a direct word from God to you. Take courage. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Psalm 27, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. So <clears throat> that's our message to you. Reach out to me. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. I want to settle those raging storms in your soul right now. God bless you in Jesus' name.